Okay, hello everyone. So, welcome to your next part of your chemistry, your thermal chem. Alright, now this chapter involves a lot of calculation. Okay, but it's not really very difficult. Once you understand what is going on, right, uh, then it will be easy for you to, uh, to calculate and to solve all the questions involving thermal chemistry. <laughs> okay, um, first things first. Alright, we need to talk about uh, heat energy here. Because since it's about thermal chemistry, so it involves uh, heat energy release or heat energy absorb. Alright, now the first thing I would like to highlight is this. Okay, when you want to break bonds, we need to absorb heat energy. Okay, if I want to form bonds or during bond formation, alright, heat energy will be released. Okay, so remember these two uh, concepts first. Alright, break bonds, I need the heat energy, which is logic. I need the heat energy to cut off all the bones, right? Not bones, bonds. Okay, and then when you form bonds, because when the particles, when they collide, right? Uh, when they collide, zoom, collide, zoom, zoom, pam, form new bonds, explode. Then you release the heat energy. Okay, so that is the meaning. Alright. Alright. Uh, bond formation you release heat bond breaking you absorb heat okay so the two exo uh, the two heat reactions that you are learning is exothermic and endothermic okay exothermic endothermic all right so when we say exothermic meaning you are releasing heat okay i'm just going through very fast all right this is heat absorb endo is absorb Okay, so you can just remember that exo, exit, exit, exit. So meaning the lot out, heat release. Okay, alright. <clears throat> so for a chemical reaction, how do we know whether it's an exothermic reaction or endothermic reaction? Okay, it's like this. Huh? For all, for a chemical reaction, right? Meaning if, for example, in this uh, reaction here, huh, I'm taking oxygen plus hydrogen. To get water, right? Okay. To, to. <clears throat> Alright. Now, in a chemical reaction, exothermic and endothermic exist both at the same time. Okay. Alright. Now, during the first part, which is this one. Okay. Bonds need to be broken in order to form a new bond. Logic, right? So, when you break your bonds in the first part, right? You are absorbing heat. Okay. So technically, we can say that the first part is endo. La. And then, when you form new bonds, right, heat is released. So during the formation of your bond, this part here is exothermic. So for this overall reaction, do we consider it as an endo or exo? It depends on which energy is the highest. Now, if you look here, the energy absorbed is 1370. You ignore the sign first, all right? while for the release, the total energy here is 1856. So the heat energy release is higher than the heat energy absorbed, right? So overall, we consider this whole reaction as endo, uh, exothermic. Okay, alright, so how we know the uh, what we call the reaction is exothermic is based on the difference in the heat energy absorbed and release. Okay, that is why for uh, heat of reaction, right? Okay, the simple calculation, if you already given this two is, you take this, you minus the heat absorbed, and then you are going to get 486 kilojoules per mole, little on, uh. alright? Now, since this is exothermic, right, so to show that this reaction is an exothermic, normally we put the negative side in front, okay? So in thermochem, the sign here, negative tells me exothermic. If positive, meaning it's endothermic. Okay, very simple. Just, just remember like that. If you see the heat of reaction given here is negative, meaning that this reaction is an exothermic reaction. Means that in the, I want to call, uh, in the reaction, right, the heat energy release is more than the heat energy absorbed. That's it. Okay, that is exothermic. If endothermic, this one is positive. <coughs> meaning that the heat energy absorbed is higher than the heat energy release. Ooh, done. Alright, so the different shapes of exothermic reaction and endothermic reaction. Okay, so I'm just going to summarize this. Exothermic. 
and then this one is endo right so you need to know how to draw the what you call a graph for an exo and also endothermic reaction lah. right <coughs> so first things first exothermic heat release okay endothermic is heat absorb all right meaning you are releasing heat to surrounding and heat absorbed from the surrounding okay so normally the shape of the graph for an exothermic all right if you look at the graph here the shape is like this meaning you will see that like this <coughs> okay this is reactant this is product all right so for an exothermic the reactant is higher than the product for endothermic is the other way around okay so for endothermic the product is higher than the reactant okay this is energy huh? all right and then when we draw the energy profile diagram okay energy profile diagram is what you need to know how to draw all right your energy profile diagram it will always ask you to draw this <coughs> okay so for exothermic how we draw your energy profile diagram a few important criteria go this one this one we straight away draw down Oops, no straight. Okay, now my arrow like this. Energy. <coughs> Alright. And then we need to label accordingly. Your reactant we will put here, your product we put here. Okay, and then here we are going to put the heat of reaction. Any negative, don't know how many kilojoules per mole. Alright. If it's for endothermic, okay, your energy profile diagram. Okay, this one you must label energy. Huh? This one is going up. And go up. Like this. <coughs> okay, then you put your reactant here, your product here. Alright, so meaning we are going to put the equation on top of here. Okay, here, delta H, heat of reaction, is equal to positive. Okay, so when you draw your energy profile diagram, alright, you need to label your y axis here energy. This one must label. Okay, when you draw down, right, this part here, your arrows here must show your arrow. Okay, and then you need to put your reactants, your equation. Okay, based on the equation, you just put reactants here, product here. And then don't forget to put the heat of reaction here, at the side here. Alright, all this must be in your diagram in order to get your full marks. Okay, alright, so for exothermic reaction, temperature will increase right temperature of surrounding will increase this one since i absorb heat from the surrounding right meaning the surrounding temperature will decrease <coughs> okay so these are a few points or a few important things about exo and endothermic okay so that allows you to identify whether it's an exothermic reaction or endothermic reaction first thing i'll look at is whether they have they give me the sign or not okay the heat of reaction value if don't have, I need to look at the other uh, what you call criteria, meaning the temperature change. If the temperature is going up, meaning it's increasing, right? So exothermic. Okay, if the temperature is going down, meaning it's endothermic. Okay, so these are the few important points. Ah, all right. Okay, so for example, if you see here, show you a few examples. Okay, remember, draw accordingly. Reactants mean you put the equation here, blah, blah, blah. All right. <coughs> so if you look at this example here, right? When you put the zinc powder into the water, reaction happens. Okay, and then heat is released to the surrounding, right? So your thermometer reading will increase. So this is exothermic reaction. Okay, so endo is the same thing. Don't go too much. Okay, application, you must know application. Uh, exothermic meaning something that releases heat. So your hot pack. When you crush your hot pack and then it becomes hot, right? So this one is exothermic. Cold pack will be endothermic. You need to know all the chemicals that you need to use for your hot pack and cold pack. All right, da -da -da. let me show you. Cold pack, normally we use this one. Ammonium chloride, potassium nitrate, sodium thiosulfate. Okay, you need to know all the chemicals that you use for your hot packs and cold pack. Okay, not going to go too much on this. I'm just going to show you the exercises. Okay, now, construct energy profile diagram for the following thermochemical equation. If they ask you to write thermochemical equation, meaning they want the equation, 
at the back you need to show them this one <coughs> okay this is what we call a thermochemical equation okay all right so first they asked me to construct the energy profile diagram for the following thermochemical equations okay means i need to know whether exo or endo so this is negative right I mean this one is exothermic this is positive so this is endothermic so i'm going to draw for the first one first energy level diagram okay label energy <coughs> all right since it's exo right meaning reactant higher product lower so it goes down like this okay and then here we put the reactant which is this one hcl plus naoh all right here we put the product nacl plus h2o all right if they give you the ionic equation then you write the ionic equation here okay so this one must put delta h must show them here negative 57 kilojoules per mole all right <coughs> so make sure you label your y-axis make sure you have your reactants and also your heat of reaction and make sure this is drop okay then you will get your energy level diagram all right <coughs> so during the exam sometimes they will ask you to uh give or what they call state three informations that you can get from the energy profile diagram Right, what are the three informations that you can get from the energy profile diagram? First one, if you cannot remember the other two, this one you write lah. Reaction is an exothermic or endothermic. Okay, write this one first. Doesn't matter lah. Alright, whatever it is, you write this one first. If they ask you the information that you can get from an energy profile diagram, first one that you say, the reaction is exothermic. So this is the first reaction, uh, first information that I can get. Alright. Okay, next information we can get is based on this one. Alright, the meaning of this value here is that for every one mole produced, I am going to pro uh, release 57 kilojoules of heat energy. Alright, <clears throat> okay, so for neutralization, right, we are producing water here because the ionic equation for neutralization is always this one. Okay, so the main player in play here is the water molecule here. Lah. All right. <clears throat> so for every water molecule that I form, I'm going to release 57 kilojoules of heat energy. That is the meaning of this unit here. Okay, that is the meaning of the heat of reaction. Basically, we are calculating every mole is released how many, oh, is released how much heat energy. That is the heat of reaction. Okay, so the quantity of heat released, use the correct word. If it's exothermic, release. Alright, <clears throat> so this is the second information. Okay, when you produce one mole of water, the heat release is 57 kilo joules. Alright, final information that you can get from the graph is, if based on the graph, you see that this one is higher than this one, right? So if you just compare the energy level uh, without looking at the arrow here, this is at higher energy level, this is at lower energy level, right? So we see the total energy of the reactant is higher than the total energy of the product all right then enough that is the three information that you can get from a energy profile diagram okay so i show you the second one energy level diagram for this one ammonium nitrate all right since this is an endothermic reaction so again endo is going up so this one like this so this one you show arrow <coughs> energy heat of reaction okay if it's endothermic show the positive sign don't leave blank okay you must always put the sign in ammonium nitrate and then you get ammonia and also nitric acid right uh, sorry ammonium ions and nitric ions <coughs> okay so check energy labeled all right it of reaction uh, got reactants got arrow okay all this you must check okay so the three information is exactly the same thing just that you change so this reaction is endothermic all right 
So it's endothermic, meaning that one mole product form you are going to absorb. Okay, heat absorbed is 26 kilojoules. Alright, and then total energy of the reactant is lower than the total energy of the product. Okay, so those are the major differences between an exothermic reaction and an endothermic reaction. Okay, right, then, <coughs> okay, so that is it. Okay, for the first part on your exothermic reaction and endothermic reaction. Okay, I'm just showing you the differences between the two things, all right, just to help you revise back whatever that you had learned, okay, in your class. Okay, next part, I'm going to show you all the calculations, okay, involving the four different types of heat of reaction, how you're supposed to write your answers and so on. Okay, so I will see you in the next video. Bye.